chapter number 21. We'll begin in Luke chapter 21 this morning. And we'll begin reading there verse number 7. And with your other hand, we're going to ask you in Revelation chapter number 6. Revelation chapter 6. Luke 21 and uh, Revelation chapter number 6. This morning, I want to bring you a little lesson, a little message. I don't even know how, how this will come across. It ain't my typical way of preaching. But I want to bring you a message I've entitled, What Does the Bible Say About Pandemic Diseases? What, what, what does the Bible say about that? We're right now in the midst of a coronavirus and uh, got a lot of people concerned and worried. And no doubt when, uh, when a disease brings death with it, not all diseases are fatal. But when a disease brings death with it, then it, it, it gets rather serious. People have a lot of questions. They want to know if the coronavirus is an end time judgment of God. We're going to answer that question today. We're going to do our best to answer several questions. Even what is a pandemic? And how should Christians respond to the present pandemic that we're in? I want you to look here in Luke 21. Jesus here in Luke 21 uh, this goes along with the text in Matthew 24. By the way, whenever you read your Bible in the gospel accounts, and you come to Matthew, and you come to Mark, come to Luke, and you come to John, and you see uh, the same message in each one, but each one says it a little different. That's just adding to what God is trying to say. All right, don't, don't think that they're contradicting each other. One will add a certain part of it, and Another one may not, and, and it doesn't mean just because one left something out that, that, that wasn't important. It just means take it all together, and you've got the total package of what God's trying to tell you and what God's trying to, trying to say. Here in Luke 21, beginning in verse, well, beginning there in verse number 7, the Bible said, They asked him, saying, Master, what when shall these things be? What sign will there be when these things shall come? To pass. And then in verse 8, the Bible said that he said, Take heed that you be not deceived. Boy, I tell you what, a lot of folks are deceived today. Yeah. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and that time draweth near, go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. By the way, I would suggest don't be too terrified. About the coronavirus. Don't let, it, don't let it disrupt your living habits. I mean, you might have to adjust a few of them, but don't get all terrified that, oh, I'm going to come down with it. Oh, it's going to be deadly. Just relax. You're probably going to be okay. He says, For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places. With famines and pestilence. And fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Now there's a word in verse 11 I want you to look at. And examine with me for just a moment. Notice the word pestilences. Listed there in verse 11. Pestilences in the Bible is really a word that, well, kind of what they're using today. The world uses the word pandemic. Yeah. The Bible uses the word pestilences. These could be, you know, micro bacteria. It could be viruses. You know what a virus is by doctors? What, 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 what doctors are doing? You ever give me a definition of what virus? Well, it means it's a disease we don't know a whole lot about. So we call it a virus. We label a virus attached to it. They really don't know a whole lot about it. Now the coronavirus just happens to be, by the way, this thing's been going on since 1960. Coronaviruses have been, been out since 1960. It's just a different strain of it comes out. And this one here is a different strain of the same one. That's why they call it COVID-19. Uh, meaning it, it occurred in 2019. That's where they get the 19 from, but it is part of the coronavirus family of the coronavirus family is what it's saying. I, I, I get all this scientific stuff mixed up if I ain't too careful. I'm a, I'm a Christian. 
I'm a preacher. I, I believe the book, amen. I'm glad I've got the King James Bible to help me with all that. Now, notice in Revelation, notice Revelation, if you would, look at chapter number 6, look at verse 7, where the Bible said, and when he had opened the fourth seal. Now, I assume the majority of you here know a little bit about the book of Revelation. You know here in chapter 6, it begins to describe these uh, four horsemen that come through. Uh, this is in the tribulation age. Uh, this is just after the church has been raptured to meet the Lord in the air. Then comes in the tribulation age. And I believe we're near the Lord's return. But I also believe that these things that are happening could be, well, the things that are happening today could be a pre-idea or concept of what God is going to see happen in the tribulation age. Now catch what he says here. He says in verse 7, And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death and hell. Do you see how that is capitalized? Capital death and capital H for hell. Brother, this horse represents death and hell. And then it said, Followed with him, and he says, and power was given unto them. That's death and hell. That's the, the pale horse rider. Power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. And notice what they're going to do. They kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Notice it says to kill with sword. Well, I know a sword can kill me. I have no problem with a guy that knows how to handle a sword can probably cut my head off and kill me or, or stab me through the heart and kill me or, or cut me up bad enough that I bleed to death. And then he says with hunger, you don't have any food. and There'll be a shortage of food during the tribulation. If you went to Walmart today, you might think there's a shortage of food there. I mean, they're stocking the shelves today, I know, but uh, way people are making runs at these grocery stores and everything. Uh, unbelievable. Listen, I think you ought to be prepared, but you ought to use common sense Amen. too. Amen. Amen. Taking all the toilet paper doesn't seem to be any common sense. That's just me. Right? And, and to kill with a sword and with hunger, but notice this, and with death. What do you mean to kill with death? If killing is already death, why? how do you kill people with death? They're already dead. <laughs> well, scholars tell me that word death there. In the text in verse 8, it would be the plagues and diseases. So you know what it would go along with? It would go along with the word pestilence. Amen. That's what it would go along with. This, this is the thing that's going to happen in the middle of the, well, in the midst of the tribulation. For a few minutes, I want to bring you the message, what does God say about pandemic diseases? Will you bow your heads and let us pray? Father, help us today. You certainly want to make sense, God. Of, uh, of the things that are happening among us today. and I need your help. I know, Lord, that I'm not the wisest man in the world, and I know that you are. So I need you to fill me with some wisdom, some knowledge, some understanding of the Bible, uh, to be able to say the things that need to be expressed here this morning. I pray that the people here today that are gathered in this assembly, that they'll look unto you, follow you, listen to your word, and be obedient to the things of God. Lord, we love you. We appreciate you. We're, we're looking forward uh, to ask you, Lord, uh, that we look daily to help us and protect us against deadly diseases and any other tragedy uh, that may come across the church and the church family. Protect these people, Lord. Put a hedge about them as you did Job and, and a, a safety, uh, uh, something uh, that, that will protect them from uh, outside influences. And Lord, as you do that, we'll thank you for that. You're a great God, a mighty God, and we love you. We need your help, and America needs you today, and our people need to be saved. So, Lord, please uh, uh, use this uh, present time as a way of drawing people to Christ, that they'll see that life is brief and it's temporary, and that they need to be prepared for the, the day of their death. And we'll thank you for that, God. It's how you work and operate in our midst here this morning, in Jesus' name. And amen. There are a number of questions this morning that I'm hoping that I can answer a little bit for you, maybe uh, concerning the epidemic that is taking place across our country, our nation this morning. A lot of people are wanting to know what is a pandemic or wanting to know if this is an end time judgment of God. Is God behind the coronavirus? 
And then uh, another thing that we do need to ask, what, what are we to do as Christians uh, during this period of time? How are we to react uh, to a serious pandemic that is sweeping across our nation and our country? Now, the World Health Organization, they describe a pandemic as a worldwide spread of a new disease. And as I mentioned to you moments ago, as we were reading over there in Luke, 21, and as we were studying here momentarily here in Revelation chapter 6, we notice that the word the Bible uses uh, rather than pandemic is the word pestilence. And uh, it has the same meaning, a worldwide disease uh, that is obviously going to stricken uh, the public and the people round about. This past December, a virus outbreak uh, came as a result, was reported out of uh, out of a country, uh, China, known as uh, Wuhan, China. The outbreak was traced to a strain of the coronavirus, uh, a name that was given to it by the World Health uh, Organization. Now, as of yesterday, and I know these statistics are changing daily, there have been at least 5,789 confirmed deaths worldwide. That's worldwide. That's just not, I mean, it's not America. There haven't been that many in America. I think there's around 50, as I heard this morning on the news uh, that has happened in our nation. However, there have been 153,000, over 153,000 people worldwide uh, that has uh, that are confirmed cases that have contacted uh, the coronavirus. Now, the first confirmed case in the United States was announced on January the 21st here of 2020, and uh, by March the 14th, 2020, there was over 2,000 reported cases across our country. And I know that has uh, changed uh, since I wrote this down since uh, last uh, Friday. Now, in the United States, uh, the, the, as I said moments ago, 50 deaths have happened. There were 31 occurring in the state of Washington alone. 31 in the state of Washington alone. 13 of them happened at the very same nursing home. Uh, so that disease began, as far as we know, in this nation, this country, has come from out of the state of Washington and has been spreading throughout uh, the land. Now, I'm going to say this because I better, I better back up just a moment. I know due to air travel that there's been other people coming from uh, the European continents uh, or the European continent and people who come in uh, from the Asian continents and have flew into New York uh, and into Atlanta and into Florida and all various airports around the country and no doubt some of them have been carrying uh, the virus with them. Now you can have the virus initially and not be sick. Uh, it, it'll come on you eventually. Uh, you can be carrying the germ uh, inside you and not become sick immediately, uh, but over time as that germ begins to penetrate uh, your body and your system, uh, it'll eventually take over and you'll start uh, having uh, flu-like symptoms as a result of being in contact with uh, the coronavirus. But I want to say this, historically, as we know uh, by history, that there have been other pandemics that have happened in the world. And I'm not going to go through every one of them, but let me throw out a few of them and throw out a few statistics. And this may be the reason why you see so much panic happening in this uh, particular time with the coronavirus. For example, in 1956 to 1958, uh, there was the Asian flu. Many of you uh, remember the Asian flu. It is estimated that the death toll of the Asian flu, uh, you know, depending on the source that you get it, but the World Health Organization says approximately 2 million deaths uh, were a result of the, uh, of the Asian flu. In fact, there was over 68, or excuse me, 69,000, over 69,000 deaths uh, as a result of the Asian flu happened in, a, in the United States itself. Then you had the flu pandemic of 1918, probably the largest flu pandemic that has ever happened on earth. And this was in 1918. The estimated death toll uh, of that uh, particular flu uh, from 1918 was 20 to 50 million people died as a result of that flu. 500 million people were infected with the pandemic in 1918, but the mortality rate was about 10 to 20 percent and about 25 million deaths during the first 25 weeks of that pandemic of the flu from 1918. What I'm saying is that's the reason why 
the government and all of the various places are wanting to shut things down and keep people uh, from mixing in public in large gatherings is for they want to try to stop uh, the spread of that virus. Now let me mention that as I mentioned that flu. We have now, due to medical science, have the ability now to pretty well corral those viruses and protect the public. And it wasn't like it was back in 1918 when you didn't have uh, the medical resources that you have today. Thank God for the technology that he has given people to be able to understand uh, diseases and how to control those diseases and things of that nature. Now these were not the only pandemics. You have a cholera pandemic. And by the way, that cholera pandemic is still running today. What they do every time there comes out a, a, uh, a new strand or a new uh, division of the cholera disease is that they give it a number. And I think they're up to about the number seven or eight. And this thing has been going through human history for a long time. I mean, you can trace this thing back way, many, many, I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years ago uh, when this thing first began to uh, be applied. And there's been lots of deaths uh, due to the disease of cholera. But in 1910 to 1911, there in India, it killed 800,000 of their citizens in India alone before it spread to the Middle East, North Africa, uh, Eastern Europe, and Russia. Now, we don't have a large outbreak here in America. Now, you don't get mad. You get upset with uh, President Trump, or you get upset with his uh, policies. But I got news for you. He's trying to protect the American public. Do you know where cholera comes from? It comes from overseas over to America. He's wanting to make sure these people are tested before they come into our country and mix and mingle among our people where we don't have the resources to prevent or to stop uh, such a terrible, dreaded disease happening among our population. So, you know, I appreciate, I appreciate Donald Trump. I appreciate another thing about Donald Trump. Uh, I think it was yesterday he called for all the churches uh, in the country and all the believers in Christ to pray for America. Amen. You know, we got, we got, we got, I mean, you would have never heard Obama say right. anything like that. You'd have never heard that. You won't hear that come out of a Democrat mouth. I said, you won't even hear that come out of a Democrat mouth. They ain't going to say that. They, I haven't heard uh, Pelosi or any of them others come up there. Schumer and that bunch get up there and say, pray for our nation and our country. They won't do it. You say, why? They don't believe in God, amen. They don't, they don't have no interest in the Lord. And they claim to be believers. They claim to be Catholic and everything else. Uh, needless to say, I, you, you say, preacher, you're getting your feathers ruffled. You bless God, I do all the time. Amen. I can't stand to watch any of them on television anymore. I have to turn off my evening news because I want to kick in the screen. Amen. <laughs> so the question we want to answer today, though, uh, while we have a few minutes here, is the coronavirus an end time judgment from God? Now, a lot of Christians are beginning to think maybe it is. Well, let me say this, and I, I want to be a gentleman here, and I want to be biblically correct. Uh, the appearance of a pandemic disease may or may not be uh, tied to God's judgment. It could be, and it may not be. Now, the disease could possibly be a result of a fallen world we live in. Folks, this world is in a fallen state of condition. Look up here, let me help you. The world is deteriorating. You understand? We live in a fallen world. Things are not getting progressively better. Man has not stopped death. He cannot stop death and never will be able to stop death, although man knows how to kill people. Man's good about, about killing people and putting people to death. Amen. <laughs> But man cannot choose it. It could be a part of our fallen world. Now, we got to answer the thing. Could, could God be sending a message uh, through the coronavirus? Are you listening to me? Hey, pick up your ears. It could be. It could be God sending a warning. It could be God saying, I'll tell you what's getting ready to happen in the future. You better get ready now because what you're seeing now is only a small, small particle of what's going to happen in the future as we read in the book of Revelation here just moments ago. I'm going to throw out a few things here so you can get your attention, maybe get your heart right with me, and then, and then as a result of that, uh, uh, it'll prevent you from having to go through some more serious problems uh, down the road. I, I don't know. I'm just saying there's a possibility. I think that every disaster, I believe that every pandemic uh, is a warning from God about just how brief life is. 
You better be ready. Uh, you know, the Bible says, what is your life? It, it is even a vapor appears for a little time and vanisheth away. Amen. The Bible says, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You've got to be ready for death. Right. You're dead. Because you don't know when it's going to happen and you've got to be saved. Amen. So the way to get to heaven is trusting Christ, believing on the Lord Jesus, being born again by the Holy Spirit of God. That's the only way you can be ready uh, to meet uh, death at the end. Now, let's make sure we understand one thing. Just because God knows when a pandemic is happening doesn't mean that God caused the pandemic. You understand? Right. There's a difference between knowing and causing. Boy, you have some people get on, well, God's sending this on, on the world, and, you know, they want to blame God. Oh, God's a mean God. He has to send down on, uh, on the earth a, a pandemic uh, uh, to, to kill people and stricken people uh, with a deadly disease. Well, now, hold it, hold it. Quit talking like a fool. It could be. It could be the Lord's trying to get our attention. It could be that man invented this thing. It could be that this was invented in some scientific laboratory and they're just giving a test on it. That's right. It could be they did this on purpose to tell you how far it would spread. Right. I mean, I don't trust the governments of the world. I certainly don't trust China. Right. <laughs> and I don't trust the Russians at all. And if you're a Russian, I love you. I hope you're safe. But I don't trust your government. <laughs> but I don't even trust our own government. <laughs> Not anymore, I don't. Right. Now, if you want to, I'm glad you have faith in it. But I'm having doubts about it myself. And I know what the Bible says is going to happen in the end times. I've read the book of Revelation. And I've read the book of Daniels when the kings of the earth go against the Lord. So I know that this thing will eventually turn out that way. Just because a pandemic happens does not necessarily mean that God caused it to happen. It could have happened on its own. It could have been man-made. Man may be the reason why we're uh, going through this. Now, I'll say that, but I'll say this too. God has used pestilence in the past to correct rebellion and judge sin. In Deuteronomy 28, I want you to turn there. Go to Deuteronomy 28. Stay with me. We'll look at uh, a few verses. Uh, won't be a bunch, but we'll look up a few. Look in Deuteronomy 28 and notice how God threatened Israel with pestilence uh, if... Uh, they turned from him. God said, now if you turn from me, be you ready. Pestilence are coming your way. And he's talking here to his people, yep. the people of Israel. And if you know anything about your Bible, the Old Testament, Brother Pete was bringing a message this morning in the book of Exodus there. And he's been going through the book of Exodus. And I don't mean stealing your thunder, Brother Pete, but you realize that those people, the people of Israel, were very rebellious people. They were stiff-necked, hard-hearted, wouldn't listen to God, wouldn't listen to Moses. And many times God had to send a judgment on him to try to correct. Now let's make sure we understand this, that any time God sends punishment to a people, it's always with the goal of repentance and restoration. It's not out of anger and, and meanness and, uh, and just to prove his power and his ability to be on. It's always because the people need to be, uh, it's because of their rebellion. He's trying to restore them back into fellowship with him. Now in Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 28, look at verse 22. Verse 22, please. Deuteronomy 28, verse 22. The Bible says, The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever. Do you see that? And with a fever and with inflammation and with an extreme burning. I'm thinking this here is talking about your temperature. It's talking about a fever inside your body. Extreme burning and with a sword and with blasting and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. So the Lord here is calling. Look at verse 21. The Bible said, The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee. Now, we talked about a pestilence. What is that? That's a pandemic. That's, what the, word, that's the word the world uses. Calls it a pandemic. The Bible uses the word pestilence uh, uh, describing the same thing. Now, here's the situation. Look up here. Everybody look up here at me. God did not want God did not want to treat the nation of Israel this way. In fact, the Lord tell, told them, I promise you I will take care of you and I'll take care of your health issues as long as you follow me. You be obedient to me and I'll take care of you. Look at Deuteronomy chapter number 7. 
Look, if you would, uh, there at verse 15, Deuteronomy 7, verse 15. Deuteronomy 7, and look at verse 15. When you're there, say amen. amen. The Bible says, For the Lord thy God, no, I'm in the wrong verse. I'm on the wrong chapter. Verse 15, 7, 15. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. So the Lord said, look, as long as you obey me, as long as you follow me, as long as you listen to what I tell you to do, follow my commandments, follow my statutes, live by my ways and habits, God said, as long as you do that, you won't have to worry about any of the illnesses or sicknesses or the pestilence that may come upon the earth. But you rebel against me. You begin to follow other gods. You begin to ignore my commandments. Then I'm going to have to do something to get your attention, to get you back to where you would repent and be restored back into fellowship with me. God was doing it out of love and kindness. He didn't want the people to be led astray. Now, I don't, I, I'm going to tell you, this whole world we live in don't have any, they don't have any respect of God. Right. The world does not respect the God of the Bible. Amen. America no longer respects the God of the Bible. Right. If they did respect the God of the Bible, there wouldn't be homosexual marriages today. Right. Y'all right. understand that, right? Right. You, you, you realize that, 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 that if they did respect the God of the Bible, there would be a whole lot different way of living today than the way people are living tonight. Amen. I'm just playing. I'm just, you know, that's the way I am. I'm not, I don't try to be around the bush about a lot of stuff. Now, we're looking at some pestilences that God has used in the past. In uh, Go to Exodus chapter number 9. While you're turning there to Exodus chapter 9, let me, uh, let me say this if I could. In Exodus chapter 7 through chapter 12, God sent 10 plagues, or in other words, disasters, upon Egypt to convince Pharaoh to free the Israelite people from the bondage that they had endured for, well, for 400 years. 400 years they were slaves. And so God had told uh, Pharaoh and his bunch, he said, now listen, uh, and God even told, as, as Brother Pete mentioned this morning in his, in his Bible lesson, that, uh, that uh, God said Pharaoh won't let, let the people go. He just won't do it. Uh, not even with a mighty hand is he going to let them go. He, he, he just... He's just going to refuse love. And he said, I'm going to have to pour out some judgments, some plagues, some pestilence upon uh, Pharaoh and, and Egypt uh, to convince him that it's time to let the people of Israel uh, be set free from slavery. In Exodus chapter 9, look if you would at verse, we'll look at verse number 9. One of those ten plagues that the Lord used was a serious boil. And this boil fell upon the people of, of, of Egypt. The Egyptians felt the wrath of God. Look at verse 9. And it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt, and shall be a boil breaking forth with blames upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. These people were stricken with, a, with boils on their body. And these boils were blamed. They were running sores on their body. Guess who sent that among the Egyptians? It was God. Why did God do it? Because he was trying to get the people of Israel set free. And Pharaoh was so stubborn, he wasn't willing to let him go free. So God says, all right, I'll get, I have to do this to the people of Egypt. I'll do it to the people of Egypt to get to their leaders. Because the people of Egypt are complaining. Why are we going through this? What are you going to do to help us? <laughs> Pharaoh couldn't do nothing. His magicians couldn't do nothing. Right. You can read further on in the text. They were stricken with a boil. What did old Pharaoh want to do? Well, we'll spend one more night with the frogs. <laughs> and that's what happened. Yeah. Exodus chapter 7 and chapter 12, you can read about those plagues. Now prophetically, this we do know. That there will be some disasters and pestilences that will appear in the end times. And we read about it moments ago. Once you go back to the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 6. Let's go back over Revelation chapter 6. 
And I know you know all this and, uh, and everything, but I, 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 we still got to go over it. There in Revelation chapter 6, let's begin reading verse 3, uh, where we have the seals, which represent four uh, different horses here, that appear. Now these, these, these aren't probably literal, literal horses. Uh, it's speaking more about the speed and the accuracy of what's going to happen uh, in the uh, latter days, in the latter times, particularly in the tribulation time. And the Bible says this in verse number 3, And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld him, lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of bounces in his hands. That would be a pair of scales. I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. See thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death and hell, followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, as I understand what is happening here and transpiring between verse 3 to verse number 8, it looks like at least a fourth of the world's population will be dead. Right. Dead. A fourth of the world's population. I don't know exactly what the... Uh, what the uh, population ratio is right now across the world, uh, it may be seven point some other, maybe close to eight billion. But let's say it's uh, let's say it's eight billion. If it's eight billion, that's going to be two billion people dead, right? Amen. Dead as a result of these plagues, and pestilences, and judgment and war falling upon this world. Right. It's going to be a terrible time to live. Amen. Right. Food uh, food shortages. Uh, you talk about shelves being empty now, brother. Let me tell you something. You'll, you'll, you'll spend your whole paycheck just for one meal. Right, right. I mean, whatever you earn in a week's time will go just to buy a meal. And then you've got to split that meal up between you and your four. Right. Your wife and your children. What a terrible time. Yep. People will do with that. Yeah, I'll tell you what people are going to do. You know why there's going to be so much killing? Right. Because if you stored up a bunch of that stuff, your neighbor's coming over with his gun. Yep. Shoot you and take what you have. Yep. I don't mean to be ugly about this. Uh, I'm just telling you, when people act very ugly in a time of, 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 of tragedy and panic uh, when they don't have or deprived of things that they need, right. particularly food, which is an essential. you got to have food to survive. Right. But it gets worse in the tribulation. I'm talking about plagues. I'm talking about pestilence. Look in Revelation chapter 8. Look at Revelation chapter 8, look at verse 11. Notice the fresh water becomes contaminated with some kind of poison killing people. I mean, it's called wormwood. Look at uh, Revelation chapter 8, look at verse 11. Don't have time to read the whole thing. I wish we did. There's a lot in here. The Bible said in the name of the star is called wormwood. Now this thing called a star is something that is coming out of the out of, from outer space. It's something in the heavens. It's something that is coming out of the cosmos. And it's coming to strike the earth. It's called wormwood. And the Bible said, look at verse 11, and the third part of the waters, that would be fresh waters, became wormwood. In other words, there, there's a, a bacteria in the, in the water. A bacteria could be called a pestilence, right? And it could be a virus that you contact. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying wormwood is. I know one thing, it poisons the fresh waters. And notice what it says in verse 11. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Or in other words, they were made poison. Y'all catching the picture here? This is an event that's going to happen in the future. Yep. This is not something that's already happened. It's something that's going to happen in the near future. Amen. This ain't the only place. There's other. By the way, let me, let me take you someplace. Let me show you something. Uh, go, to, go to Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16, look at, uh, look at verse number 2. Revelation chapter 16, look at verse number 2. 
We're talking about some uh, tragic disasters, some plagues, some pestilence uh, that is going to come on earth in the future. Look at Revelation chapter 16. Look at verse number 2. The Bible said, And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell, watching a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. So here we see some terrible type of skin boil coming out upon the people that had taken the mark of the beast. Who caused all that? God let it happen, right? I mean, these people will be covered in boils. They're, they're, they will be sick. You look at them, they'll look grotesque. You look at them, you won't want to be near one of these people. If you were to see one, you'd say, oh my goodness, I, I, stay away, that thing could be contagious. You wouldn't want to have what they've got. These are the things that the Bible is predicting that will happen eventually in the future. Maybe some of these diseases or pandemics uh, could be caused by biological warfare. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of things we don't know right now. Some of the, uh, this coronavirus, some of it could be a leak from some scientific laboratory. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I'm going to tell you what I heard. I know you hear a lot of things. I cannot uh, vouch for this. I cannot testify that this is an accurate statement that I'm going to tell you. But I heard the other day one commentator on the news, on your favorite network, Fox News, <laughs> get up and he said this. He said, we have studied this coronavirus and said that we have found out that there's something different about it than all the other coronaviruses that have come out in the past. said, this one here has a little different strain to it, and he says it looks like it has been uh, somewhat hijacked from a scientific laboratory. And that China was going to allow this to happen just to see what a little bit of it could do in a matter of weeks and months. Now, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that commentator knows what he's talking about. I'm just telling you what came across the news, and they're saying this, that even after you recover from the coronavirus, you're still carrying the germ within you 14 days later. I'd hate to think that's the case, because generally after it runs its course through your body, through your system, your immune system has built up an immunity to it, and it casts it off your system, goes out through your waist. But there's a possibility this thing could be much dangerous than what we think, if this guy's correct. I don't know. I'm going to tell you, I don't know what expert to listen to. I don't trust nobody. Amen? I, I want to. It's not I don't want to trust them. I just want to make sure they know what they're talking about. But that's what one guy said the other day over the news. And I, and I said it was it, it was Fox and maybe not been one of the others, but I doubt it because I don't listen to any of the others but Fox. But every now and then. I know one thing. This thing has disrupted people's lives. It's hurt the economy. Stock market dropped, lost a ton of, uh, uh, you know, buy, uh, selling out and everything. And I know a lot of people's uh, IRAs and the retirement funds have dropped and dipped quite a bit over the last week and a half or two. But you know something? God's in control. Irregardless of what is happening in this world, God is in control. How should Christians respond to the coronavirus. I'm going to give you three things and we'll be out of your hair. Number one, don't panic. Just don't panic. They, they, as Christians, we don't have to panic because we do know that the Lord is in control. Trust the Lord. Have faith in God. Many people are panicking. The store shelves are depleting. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to trust the Lord. Amen. Trust God with everything. Everything's going to work out all right. Everything will be okay. I would suggest that you pray for your family and friends. I suggest that you would uh, pray that the Lord would shield your family and protect you and put a hedge about you and, uh, from the uh, coronavirus. But I, I think if I, I just would not panic over what's happening right now. You say, but what if I catch it, preacher? What if it comes into my family? What if it takes a loved one? Well, you know, right now you just need to pray for your family and loved ones. And I'd certainly talk to my family and loved ones if they did contact 
Ask them if they're ready to meet the Lord. Are they saved? You, you need to be ready. Particularly the elder. That they, they, they're ready. That they, they, they know the Lord. That they're ready. I'm praying the Lord will stop uh, the uh, spread of this virus. I'm asking God to do that. I, I prayed the last several days, Lord, would you please stop the spread of this virus. But you know what I pray at the end of that? Thy will be done. Your will be done, God. Right. Now, my will is for him to stop, but his will be done. And that's what you've got to pray. Lord, thy will be done. Lord, I'd like for you to see you stop the spread of this. Don't want to see our family. Don't want to see our children. Don't want to see our church family, our friends, uh, our co workers. We don't want to see anybody uh, come in contact uh, with the coronavirus. But, Lord, may your will be done. Right. Yeah. And then, number two, I'm going to say this be wise. Take reasonable steps to avoid exposure to the disease. We're trying to do it here at the church. That's why we're stopping the handshake. That's why we're stopping the hugging. I know, I know, we love the handshake. You ladies love to hug each other and, and everything. And, but you just got to stop that for a little bit. It doesn't mean we don't love each other. We love each other. But we just have to realize that right now we're in a pretty serious climate of our country where... Uh, a contagious disease can be spread. So as a result of that, we're going to take good measures of uh, making sure that we uh, uh, wash our hands and, and uh, that we uh, take care of one. By the way, let me say this. If you go to the store, you buy some items, buy you some extra items in case you are quarantined. I have a few items left there now. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to be like that guy was carrying three shopping buggies through Walmart full of, of toilet paper. Amen. He had three buggies full before this thing kicked out uh, of toilet paper. I mean, it was stacked up inside. Of course, it wouldn't take much to fill a buggy with as big as those bundles are. But, uh, but you don't have to do that. All right? And by the way, if you have some extra things and your next door neighbor doesn't, right. go over and give them a few of the items you've got. Help one another out. Yep. Help your brothers and sisters in Christ out. Uh, uh, and by the way, if you get sick, stay away from the church. Stay away from work. Go see a doctor. Go get checked out. That's your, my suggestion. Be wise. But pray and protect your family and your home and, and the needs that you have. And then finally, I want to say this, and I'm done. Look for opportunities to minister God's word. There's a lot of people right now are nervous. They're wondering, is this the judgment of God? And a lot of them aren't saved. Right. They're wondering. It's a good time to tell you the Lord knows everything. He has everything in charge, yeah. under control. Let me tell you about the Lord and, and share the gospel. I will say this. You need to check on the elderly neighbors around about you. Some of them aren't able to get to the store as frequently as you are. And uh, you, if you've got elderly in your community, elderly in your neighborhood, and uh, go check on them. Go, go knock on the door. Find out if they're doing okay. Uh, and if they need something, you might ask them, can I run and go get you some groceries or maybe some medicines? A lot of people need their medicines. Yep. And some people, the elderly right now, are terrified. Because that's who's being contagious to the disease that it's being fatal to them. And they're, they're nervous about even getting in a car and going down to, to the Walmart or to CVS or one of the other pharmacies just to get their medicine, afraid that they may come in contact with this deadly virus. So check on the elderly. And also share what you have with those that may be in need. Let me close with a text of scripture. Go to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Let me show you how much control God is at in this thing. I'm going to claim these verses, the promises of God. You all claim promises out of the Bible? I suggest you do that. Claim a promise. Look at Psalm 91. Look at verse number 3. Verse number 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. The he there is God. Surely he, God, shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Here it is. He's going to free you from it. He'll do, he's going to deliver you from it. Look at verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the error that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, 
but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Well, I, I suggest you do that. Make it, uh, my neighbor came out. My neighbor came out. Now, y'all know I'm a big sports guy, right? I love, I mean, right now, this is March Madness time, right? And, uh, and, uh, and, and we're in baseball. I coach baseball. And uh, in our high school team, we had to cut our schedule. I, it upsets me. I understand why, but it upsets me. And, and my, my grandson in his senior year, and, and, and we're, we had a good team, and we got a chance I to go a long way this year. And now they've had to cancel all this, postpone it uh, for a while, uh, suspend the season. And, and, and I'm going, good night, man. And my neighbor across the street, I was out in my front yard, and my neighbor, he's a big sports fan. He's a Christian, too. He loves God. And he come out and he said, hey, Brother Claude, what are we going to do now? There's no sports. I said, read the Bible. Amen. We got more time to read the Bible now. More time to pray. More time to read the Bible. That's what I plan to do. I hope you plan to do the same thing. Amen. Now let me finish the verse. Look at, well, I won't finish it all. Look at verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Amen. That's a promise for us. I'm glad we got the promises of the living God right here in Psalm chapter 91. Stand to your feet. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Got to ask a very important question. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Nobody looking around. I'm not here to embarrass nobody. But I want to ask you a question. Are you saved? How many here in this audience today can honestly raise your hand?